welcome to Kids Academy. Hi, in this video we'll be talking about a skewer. And one way to think about a skewer is that a skewer is sort of like a pin in reverse, meaning that when you pin a piece, you attack a piece, and there's a more valuable piece behind it. We're gonna flip that around. In this case, we're gonna attack the more valuable piece. That piece will have to step to the side and run away, and then we can capture a less valuable piece behind it. In this game, it's White's turn, and at first glance, it looks like White is in some trouble playing a rook against a queen, but White can use a skewer to turn this game around, and the move is rookie one check. Rookie one attacks the king, the most valuable piece in the game, and behind it is the queen. So as soon as the king runs away, we can play rook takes e8 and do the king and rook checkmate and win this game. So the king moves, we capture the queen. It's important to notice that rook h4 isn't as powerful. It's attacking the king, but there's nothing behind it. This would not be a skewer. This would just be a regular old check. The move we're looking for is rook e1. The front piece is the king, the back piece is the queen. In this game, it's Black's turn, getting a little bit more advanced here, but Black has a very nice combination to set up a skewer and win this game. Right now, this game is pretty even. White has a rook, a knight, and a very far advanced passed pawn. That pawn is two steps away from turning into a queen, but Black does have the two rooks. Black can use these rooks to its advantage by playing a very nice skewer tactic here. And we set it up actually with the move rook takes e2 check. White has nothing better than to take this rook, at which point notice how the king and the rook are lined up. They're both on the second rank. Black follows with rook h2 check, and suddenly we see the skewer happening. The king is in front, the rook is behind. The king moves to the side. We capture the rook and next turn we'll capture the pawn. Let's go very back to the beginning. So I like that this knight is pinned. This king and rook are on the same rank. One idea would be to try to create a battery, bring this rook here and this rook here to have two rooks on the second rank. But I think it's just a little bit too slow. So we can set up the skewer idea immediately. This is a forcing move as well. It's a check, white must respond. We take the rook. We skewer the king, we get the rook behind it, and next the pawn will fall. Okay, our third position, white to play. Same thing with the pin. Look for your opponent's pieces that are on the same line, that are on the same rank, file, or diagonal. And remember, same thing with pins, only pieces that move in straight lines and our long range pieces are able to do skewers. So we're speaking of queens, rooks, and bishops. Those are the only three pieces that can make a skewer. Okay, so it's white to play. What is white's best move here? Well, I hope you saw that this queen and this rook are lined up. They are on the same diagonal, this a3, f8 diagonal. Can we attack these pieces? Ah, uh, yes, we can. Bishop b4 skewers the queen and the rook. Just to refresh your memory, a bishop is worth three points, the queen is nine, the rook is five. So once this queen moves to safety, we can capture the five-point rook. Our bishop might be captured in turn, but our bishop is only three points, so we net two points. Five minus three is two. We come out ahead two points. We set this up, bishop b4. It's important to know that bishop b4 would not work if this pawn weren't here. This pawn on a3 supports our bishop. If we can make believe this pawn wasn't here, the queen would just be able to capture our bishop for free. So the whole key to this puzzle is this pawn on a3, which supports our bishop, which skewers the queen. Last but not least, black to play. Look for white pieces that are lined up on the same rank, file, or diagonal. And if there's any way that a black bishop, queen, or rook can take advantage of that fact. You might have the idea queen b6, and you might be thinking the queen and the pawn are on the same line, but I would say a couple of things to this. Number one, if this queen moves away, are we really threatening to capture this pawn? 
our nine point queen capturing this one point pawn? I don't think so because we would just get captured and we'd lose a lot of points. Also, white could even just capture our queen. We capture back and it's a fair trade, but we're not winning material. We need to find a tactic that lets us win material. Are there any other skewers here? Well, I noticed this bishop is bearing down on this queen and this rook. This looks like it could be something. This knight moves, the bishop is revealed to discovered attack. Question is, where should that knight go? None of these squares are safe. The queen guards here, the bishop guards here. What about knight g8? A backwards move, how does this look? Hmm. The queen could just capture our bishop, so we end up losing three points. And next, our rook is trapped, our knight is pinned. This is getting pretty scary. How about the move knight h5? I think this is the winner. The knight is guarding the bishop, so that can't happen. The queen can't capture. The queen must run to safety, and then we can capture this rook for free. So very important, we found this knight, nice knight resource that allows the knight to protect the bishop, and the bishop skewers the queen and the rook. So remember, a skewer is like a pin in reverse. Only rooks, bishops, and queens can perform skewers. Always be on the lookout for your opponent's pieces that share the same rank, the same file, or the same diagonal. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.